Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the electric kiln and how to fire it. So diving into the digital kilns, this is my kiln setter. So I did a video a while back, I'll put a thingy up in there. Did a video a while back about how to fire a kiln in general. But I got a lot of comments about people who don't, they don't know how to fire a digital kiln. So the digital kiln is one that does all the firing sequences for you. It's so much easier. I'm an avid potter and as I, and as such, I fired uh, gas kilns, anagama kilns, raku kilns, uh, digital, electric, manual, all the, all the different types. I fired all these kilns. I will tell you now, as somebody who I was raised on the old school electric kiln that had the knobs on, it had to dial it in, had to change all the things. I love that because I like having that ability to fine tune all of the stuff that I do and, and what I'm doing in firing, what little tweaks I wanted to add to it, I could add it to it right then. Then I came to a school that had an actual digital kiln and this, this has changed how I like to fire at this point. I love firing off of a digital now just because it's so easy. Uh, there really, there really is. Uh, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. It takes a lot of the, the trouble of uh, if you're in the middle of a class and you have to go change the temperature. You got to flip the dial from medium to high, and all that kind of stuff can get thrown off while, while you're teaching class. This thing does it all for you. I'm a big fan of that because then I don't have to worry about my firing sequence and when I'm doing stuff. And it, and it also fires. It also is programmable, so I can set a timer to fire over a long sequence at a certain time. All that makes my life easier. So uh, for all my teacher friends out there, if you guys have access to getting a digital account, if somebody gives you a an option, go for the digital. It makes your life easier. All right, so let's go over the base here the two things that you're gonna to want to know is one how to do a bisque fire and then two how to do a glaze fire that's really it you're fine-tuning stuff in there but that's all that you're gonna learn so let's first start by flipping the bad boy on we're waiting there we go it's idle all right so once you've turned it on and it's at the idle state which is what it's at right now uh right now it's registering 66 degrees in here for me that's quite warm i'm i i'm a cold person i like cold uh myself so at the idle state now we can start working in our programs now if we're doing a program that's where we're setting up the sequence of the firing events that are going to happen now most people you have scut bartlett this one's a bartlett timer i think l and l makes a makes a varied one um but i don't remember off the top of my head but i know that scott um has another one so i'm working on another video for that i got a buddy who uh she needed firing help and i, I shot a video when it was in her room on how to use her kiln how to set up the ramps it's not hard but in most of these programs work similar to each other all right so let's go over this bartlett timer and how to and how to go through it all right, so on the side over here, you have your cone firing sequences. Now we have slow bisque, fast bisque, slow glaze, and fast glaze. Like I said, there's only two types you gotta learn, bisque and glaze, that's it. So slow bisque and slow glaze are the ones that I usually recommend. Why? Because the slow bisque allows all of the physical water that we're baking out of our clay to go in a shorter, um, to escape from the clay in a longer time frame. And that's very, that's kind of an important feature, uh, especially if you have kids who uh, make little pockets uh, over their clay where we have trapped air. If you leach it out slowly enough, typically it won't pop. Not saying 100%, I'm just saying it's got a better chance of surviving. But if you fast bisque, then you're gonna really cook these things out quickly you're gonna go from the if any of your wear had still had some moisture into it you're forcefully exp, uh, pulling that moisture out of that clay at a, such a faster rate that you could cause warping fractures pieces could pop crack blow up explode all this fun stuff so I'm a big fan of doing the slow bisque myself but because of time constraints some people need to do a fast bisque so just know that if you're doing a fast bisque or a slow bisque what could be the outcome Big difference between the fast and the slow is the ramp element, which is how fast it's going to go from from zero to sixty in in the in the firing in the firing ranges. So they're just going to ex, they're just going to compound on each other a lot faster. So it just shortens the firing sequence. How short is that firing sequence? There's a lot of variables at play. How much moisture is in the air? What is the air temperature outside? Because that's going to be pulling heat from the inside of the kiln outside through radiation, which 
heat radiation is, is another element that we have to deal with when we're dealing with kilns of how much expansion is, is being taken place. So, but we're having to deal with how the heat is transferred from one object to another. So take these things into account. All right, for slow bisque, let's go through the firing sequence. I'm gonna hit slow bisque to initiate that it's a slow bisque. That's what I'm firing for. Press enter. There we're gonna have to select our cone. Now most cones for most low fire bisque are gonna be between 06 and 04. Uh, 04 is 1945. 06 is 1828 and it's 1888 for 05. So uh, if you have like the old school cones, you have the old school cones by Orton. They look like this. Uh, you don't need these anymore. That's like one of the best things is you don't have to go buy all these kilns. I have a whole box I got a whole, right there. That whole box is full of like 40 of these little boxes. So I could do any firing I wanted to do, but I don't need to now because I have this thing. It's so much easier. So once you've uh, selected which cone that you're gonna do again, I usually show, go to 04 for my bisque. You always want to fire two cones higher on your bisque versus your glaze because the rate of the expansion of the clay is changed to where the clay is still porous enough to take glaze, but then the glaze shrinkage rate when it's firing is firing to fuse better to the kiln, to, to the clay once the clay has been fired two cones higher. So you always want to fire two cones higher than the glaze rate, and that's just to ensure that your glaze is fully compacted on the surface of that clay. For the 04 bis, we're going to press enter, hold. This is the one thing that gives, we're, we're going to go over this one in a minute. We're going to, we'll come back, we'll come back to this. I'm gonna leave it at zero right now and then to idle. Once I have that done, we're, we're gonna check the program. This is a very important feature. So you're going to down here at the bottom, you have cone table, review po program, and view segment. I'm gonna just review my program. Preheating for zero, going to cone 04, which is Fahrenheit 1945. Going to uh, the, the hold is zero, my delay is zero, my alarm is set at 99 and is ready to fire. I already fired this kiln 249 times. I think I was the first one to fire it. It's always cool when you get a fire for the first time. Once that's done, you just hit start and it'll go ahead and click on. Now it's starting to cycle through, through our, through the actual heating elements. So the heating elements are now on activated and they're going to go ahead and start cycling up through the ramp and getting the kiln hot and ready to go, ready to cook your wares. And it'll just keep cycling on and off like this. You'll just keep hearing the clicking uh, just because it's starting to get everything heated up. That's all the clicking is. If you are made a mistake and you need to cancel the firing, stop, and it stops, stops firing altogether, goes back to idle. I can review my program again. It's gonna be the same program, which is the last one that I put in. No changes to that, so it's just gonna run that program if I hit start again. Uh, I always review my programs at the at, 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 right before I hit start every single time just in case I've miscalculated something because that happens. You press a button, you think you press the right one or you double press another button and you, your firing is completely off. I always review my program, it's just a safety measure. If we're not doing a bisque firing, we're gonna move that into a glaze firing. For that, we're gonna hit slow glaze. Again, I prefer to do it slow just because, you know, take a little bit of extra caution. Now for slow glaze, going from zero in the kiln up to the cone temperature is all about the ramp speed. So how fast or how slow do you want it to go? For glaze, most of your pieces, because you're dealing with already bisque clay and you're just ramping it up, typically a fast glaze is gonna be fine. Most of the time it's gonna be fine. Here's where, where lies the issue. A fast glaze is taking it from, and, and it, when I was firing a manual kiln, I did the same thing. A fast glaze is gonna go, give it preheat it for, um, again, it's going from zero to cone temp very quickly. Uh, you want just enough heat to be in the clay. When I was firing a manual kiln, I uh, would leave it on low for about an hour, maybe two if I was really generous, and then kick it into high right after that. Because the clay just needs to be warmed up to temp so that your moisture in the in the glaze, moisture in the clay is completely baked out, and you can go ahead and start curing the glaze. Why I would do a slow glaze is because if you were dipping a lot of pieces, you're still gonna have a level of humidity in the kiln as those pieces start to heat, heat up, the water that's in the glaze, um, if they were dipped pieces, 
you're gonna have a level of humidity that's just gonna have to get baked out. And you're gonna have that concentrated amount of an atmosphere that you're gonna wanna make sure that all those pieces survive equally. What do I mean? If you were in the middle of a rainforest and you had all of this humid vegetation around and all of a sudden you started a fire in the middle of it, it was a massive bonfire. All the humidity that's in the air is gonna start to uh, sweat. It's gonna create steam and that steam is then gonna want to escape and go off around different things. Now, if this is your clay pieces that that steam is going on, you're now creating an atmosphere of a moist atmosphere where some of those pieces could pop, fracture, crack, uh, all these bad things could happen just because you're you're ramping up that moisture level, trying to get it escape as fast as possible. It might not escape. So again, just a little bit of a guarantee. Not, I don't want to say guarantee. A little bit of a warranty, extended warranty to your pieces. Run it slow, because um, like a good barbecue, low and slow comes out great. All right, so I've got my slow glaze initiated. I'm gonna hit the cone, going to cone. 06 again i'm firing two cones higher in bisque than i am in glaze so i'm going to cone 06 press enter hold is going to be at zero press enter and then i have it at idle the kiln program is ready to go now go ahead and review the program slow glaze preheating at zero going to cone 06 which is 1828 um my hold sensor is at zero delay is at zero alarm is set and it's going to go for the firing, uh, this firing, again, 249. So that's how you program the kiln. You select what your firing sequence is, select your cone, select your hold, review your program, you're good to go. You have two firing sequences. You have bisque and you have glaze. That's basically it. But there are a couple things that you wanna change in there during the process. Number one for me is candling. Candling mode is where you're doing a preheat, uh, setting the temperature to basically evaporate all moisture in the glaze and the clay for an extended period of time so that your firing comes out as best as possible. The candling mode is gonna heat the kiln to about 200 degrees for an extended amount of time. How do you program that? Over here on the side, we have options. We have delay, alarm, menu. Again, this is for the Bartlett version, but they all kind of work similar. So I'm gonna go to slow bisque, enter, going to cone 04 for my bisque, hold, I'm gonna leave it zero, and we're going to idle. Then I'm gonna press menu, reset, preheat. From preheat, press enter. I have zero listed on the preheat. I'm gonna preheat this for eight, hours so eight zero zero you got a little dot there so press enter now it's back on idle let's review the program to make sure that we have the right amount of preheat in there going to preheat for eight hours then going to cone 04 for 1945 is the cone temperature that i want to fire to hold is at zero delay is at zero alarm is already set and ready to go for the on all i have to do is press on and it'll start the preheat process now I do this when, uh, if I have a long weekend and I'm running a bunch of wear, I will program it then. And I know I'm gonna hear some flack in the comments and from other teachers about why do you fire when you're not at school? Because there's an alarm set. I understand how my kiln fires. I understand what the processes are for um, the firing sequence. If you want to fire during the school day, I fully support that. When I first started firing, I only fired during the school day. Having a digital kiln, I can fire in the evenings and let it go overnight, and it provides the same amount of a firing uh, aspect as if I was in the room. It's already preset. I don't have to turn on anything. I don't have to babysit it. Um, with that said, there is that risk of your kiln could short out. The kiln is not gonna have an actual fire in it as long as there's not a combustible in it. Um, I've, I have done in like an electric firing situation where these electric kilns are oxidization kilns, which means that there is a predetermined set of oxygen inside the kiln. A reduction kiln is where you're firing with gas and you're gonna change the amount of oxygen in the, in the, cis, in the kiln itself. Uh, you do that through a flue. So at the top of the kiln, there's a sh there's a chute that you can pull back and forth to change how much oxygen is going in and out of the kiln at the same time. The electric kilns are all firing off of coil. It's the same as an oven inside of a house. There's no actual fire there. There's a heating element, but there's no flame. 
Um, could things become combustible? Yes. Do I let things come anywhere near my kiln? No. I have a three foot minimum radius between my kiln and any other objects so that even radiating heat is not going to affect the items around it. Uh, kilns are all insulated with fire brick, which retains the heat and then they have the metal shielding on the outside i ensure that nothing is touching the kiln at any time at all except myself which i'm leaning around longer right now but that's off so i'm not really worried about it yeah i know it's i know it's on i'm turning it i, I got that don't preheat to extend that time frame of how how it's going to fire it does give yourself a little more of an insurance policy to the way that the, your kiln is heating it's just a good backup plan to make sure that all your wear is going to come out as best as possible now you can candle for a glaze fire just the same as you would a bisque i always do it for a bisque uh, regardless of how the wear is because i want to ensure that all of the wear has reached from bone dry state uh, as uh, that all of the pieces that i've put in the kiln are at a bone dry state i do put pieces in at leather hard state inside the kiln uh and then go ahead and do the candling mode to go ahead and bake them off and dry them out faster um, I do this depending on the type of piece that it is. Uh, it's one of those things where you, it's a rule of thumb. You learn over time after you, after you fire several things. If you want to have just a little bit more of an insurance policy, what I do is I'll have some of my pieces or my students' pieces. We'll put them in a leather hard state because they're finished. They're done. They're not touching them anymore. They're they're completely set. And I'll go ahead and put them in the kiln. The reason I'll put them in the kiln at leather hard state is it gets us done with the piece faster so we can move on to the next step which is to fire the piece and get it ready for glaze so i do it to make the class move faster two i do it because it's also a security thing by putting the piece in here at leather hard state instead of bone dry state if i accidentally bump it against something leather hard it's going to take a hit and it's going to keep on going but if it's bone dry it could crack break and then completely be done and the student's done out of piece i have something uh, that I've got to now come up with another way to grade the student on that piece. So putting it leather hard and being done with it 100% gives us a better solution than waiting until it hits 100% bone dry. All right, next thing we want to talk about is hold. So we'd come back to this before. So if we're going to our glaze and we're going to select glaze, going to cone 06, and then we're going to hold for, let's say 45. So 45, which is before the dot and hit enter, what I've done now is once the cone reaches temp, it's going to that cone 06, which is an 1828. At that state, I want to keep the kiln on. Most kilns and kiln setters all do the same thing. Once it reaches that certain state, if you have a cone, if you use an old school kiln, you have the kiln setter in there. It's that three prongs, it looks like this. You put your cone in there, and then there's that bar that sits on top of the cone. As the cone heat as the kiln is heating, the bar is gonna go down, press, and break the cone in half, like this, or it's gonna come and it's gonna be slumped. And you're gonna have it bend. Once it reaches that bend, what it does is it releases the latch to turn off the kiln. And that kiln is because the kiln has reached that state at that point, you're the kiln will shut off, it's no longer heating, it's in cool down mode, and it's just gonna sit and cool down over time and as it normally would. With the hold feature, you can hold the glaze or the hold the fire at that temperature for a set specified amount of time. Most holds are usually under an hour, it's you know 10 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. This one I put on here for 45. You can put the hold on as long as you want, but here's what happens in the kiln. If you have glaze on the side of your piece, and let's say that we put all of our glaze up here and all the part down here is left blank. If your glaze has a lot of flux in it, a lot of uh, silica that can create a glass structure, your gloss glazes, that'll cause them to start to run some because the temperature at that melt point is now liquefied the outside of it. Now it's gonna take that liquid uh, and as it's you know normally a sticky, kind of substance it's going to liquefy more and start to ooze down the side of the piece this works for a couple things one if you have put piece you put your glaze on your piece and you fired it a few times and when you pull it out you have these little air bubbles in it uh that's uh the gas coming out of the glaze and the clay 
uh, and it's creating these little air bubbles and it's just not sealing right when it's going through the cool down. By doing the hold, you can liquefy it more, those air bubbles escape completely and it's still liquefying and then they'll cover back over uh, those little spots so it have a, has a nice clean surface when it comes out of the kiln. That's a benefit. Uh, downside is if you have a really runny glaze and it runs down and hits your kiln shelf because your hold was on too long, then you got to chip the piece off the kiln shelf and hope that your kiln shelf survives. So there's pluses and minuses with this. Um, I've done uh, glass slumping and glass fusion during this phase where I will take the kiln to glass melt temp, which I think is like a 1450, 1500 roundabout. I'll leave it on hold for about 30 minutes because I want to have all that glass slump down and hold at that temperature. Once it re once it, the hold is finished, the kiln will shut off, it'll start cool down like normal. You could do glass fusing, glass slumping in this at, if you're if you're um, done some research in that. I will say that if you take it above a certain melt point, the glass goes from the clear crystalline color. Glass will change from an, a clear state to an opaque state because of something in the kiln, uh, something in the gla in the glass uh, changes it to not it becomes completely cloudy. Don't know why, but it does. So that's uh, a, a good option to deal with with the hold setting. But again, it all comes back to the basics of you have absolute control over how your firing goes, but it does it for you and you don't have to sit there and babysit it and, and hope that everything fires the way it's supposed to because the kiln setter does it for you. It's just a wonderful tool. And last but not least, before you leave the kiln, once the kiln's completely cooled down, it's back to normal, make sure that you shut it off just because of safety sake in case anything wants to bump the buttons and turn it on accidentally you don't want that so i keep mine off all the time unless uh i'm doing a firing so again make sure your safety's uh check your safety awesome class hope you guys got something fun out of today's lesson i was you know hanging out in the kiln room with you guys today uh i'm gonna be stuck here on the floor for probably another 10 minutes to wait until my leg comes back online because it's dead asleep right now it's like all my knee hurts Oh, my knee hurts really bad. Ah, woo. Awesome class, hope that you guys got something wonderful out of today's lesson. Again, going over kilns, I get kiln questions constantly, so always happy to make these videos where you make life and firing easier for you guys and finding ways to help you guys out with ceramics as often as possible. As always, let's go ahead and take care of the homework, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share all various platforms, get the message out there to many teachers, students, and friends as much as possible. I want to try and spread education and make everybody smarter. Don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern today, raise the hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. As always, I'll see you guys next class. Until then, I'm going to be stuck in the floor until my legs come back online. So I'll see you. I'll see you next class. See you guys later. Uh, uh, clear, clear. Oh, can't talk. Let's review the program. Slow glaze, preheating to O to uh, 